Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my two decades of experience as a business owner and a craftsperson to answer questions. And we're going to get to any of your random questions that you have today. We got a couple really interesting things, interesting things going on today. So we got some work in the Slavic shop going on here behind us. I am going to give away five of these things. So not one not two, we're giving away five of these things today and I'm gonna show you exactly uh, exactly what to do to get those. So, number one, you have to share this show. That's, uh, that's sort of the entrance fee for this. We're gonna start off picking uh, winners of these things by just going through whoever shared the show. Then, uh, you have to like Purdy on Facebook, you have to like Purdy on Instagram, and then comment down below how this thing would help you in your daily work. And we'll get more to that. Uh, we're also going to go over some basics, some science of painting smooth surfaces. So I'm going to show you some very specific tools that I use. We think we understand this stuff, but again, most of us say, I use this brush for this, I use this roller for this, and it works. A lot of the times we don't know why. I'm just going to uh, drop a little bit of knowledge on you, the things that I've been privy to uh, talking to these brush and roller, uh, like Purdy uh, manufacturers and stuff over the years. So number one, again, uh, the kindest thing you can do uh, for Purdy. Purdy made a big ask, and in, in exchange for these five backpacks, not only do they want to get the word out about them, they really want reviews for the backpack. So please, all my people who have these things, we have uh, probably about eight people in my company. This is my personal one here. We are all going to leave reviews. Purdy is asking one huge thing. Go leave a review for this. There is a link in this uh, in this show where you can uh, click on it. It'll only take a couple minutes. I promise. It's a simple thing. It would be insanely, insanely useful to Purdy. Small ask for this sort of thing. So, uh, all right, everybody. The PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. There are some interesting things going on this year in the year of COVID. Uh, we have to kind of redo how we get together. Uh, there's a, a new Facebook group uh, for painting contractors uh, that's been lots and lots of activity recently. Uh, the Painting Contractors Association uh, is one of the largest, smartest groups of human beings that I've ever met in the trades. And it's no coincidence that hockey stick curve like this uh, from when uh, I came from obscurity, uh, ignorance in the trades to collaborating with other people, and then uh, my maturity as a craftsperson, as a business owner, took off. Not coincidentally, the same time I joined and met people in the PCA. So I would urge you to look into that as well. They have a whole bunch of free resources like standards uh, that you can get to. There's a link down there below. So, pretty backpack. This is my personal one here. You can see my little patch that I put on here. Uh, recently, uh, there's been a lot of chatter online for people who have been um, uh, following me. We just re-outfitted all of my craftspeople in my company and I took it upon myself uh, to purchase uh, backpacks for all the senior craftspeople in my company and they absolutely love them. We actually had a jail job. We went to a county jail and uh, one of my senior craftspeople, I, I showed up on site to make sure they understood sort of the, uh, the expectations and deliverables for the job. One of my senior people had their backpack there and it was so useful because you can only bring so many things into a jail. You gotta get let through about 15 different secured doors. You can't be making 19 trips out there. They packed this thing full of stuff and walked in. It was perfect. They set this down, opened it up. It's like a little mini job site. So, with uh, the backpack, one of the main things you're gonna see, this is super unique. This is a pouch for wet brushes and rollers. Brushes and rollers, uh, take them home, take them somewhere else and wash them. And this is sort of a, uh, uh, a pouch that can be washed. So this is super useful uh, to bring those home. Uh, random kind of like pockets out in front here. Uh, I've, been, I've been using this front pocket for tech uh, here. So I throw my tablet in, I throw my digital pens, my, uh, my laser uh, range finder, things like that in there. Miscellaneous stuff. Uh, this has a beautiful like uh, padded um, kind of soft fabric on the inside. Small pocket up here. I've been throwing sunglasses and just miscellaneous tools like a couple carpenters pencils and things like that. And then to the big fun stuff here. The big pockets. So uh, brush storage. Uh, this is always nice uh, to kind of lay everything out. It's tiered. You can see all your stuff. Also, I should say, folks, this is uh, the prep pouch. This is something that we wear around our waists, put all our tools in and stuff, too. This one is the official uh, Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration prep pouch. Uh, somebody who gets a pretty backpack, I throw in one of my prep pouches in there as well. So, uh, of course, one of my favorite tools on this planet, the pretty uh, folding tool like this in here. Uh, and, of course, you know, the... Uh, 
the, the putty knives, the, the wall board blades, things like that. Then, large main compartment in the back, rollers, rollers handles, things like that. Uh, there's actually a phone or a tech charger in here too that can, that can come off the side, but lots of big stuff in here. And again, like I said, when you're, uh, when you're transporting stuff, especially in projects like those uh, county jail and stuff that I was on, it's insanely important not to make a thousand trips. You have everything you need. At the end of the day, you just sort of zip everything up, self-contained, ready to go. So again, folks, we are going to give five of these things away. This is, uh, this is no kidding here. Again, here's the requirements. Uh, you share this show. That's, uh, that's entrance number one. Uh, you have to like Purdy on Facebook. You have to like Purdy on Instagram. All the links there. And then you have to comment down below how this thing would help you. And Monday, uh, three, three and a half days from now, I am going to randomly pick five winners and you are going to be sent this free. Isn't that great? And you can, you can enjoy this thing and use it as much as I do. So, all right, folks, let's get to rough versus smooth uh, surfaces. So let's get the camera back on here. All right. So number one, we use a lot of different tools and a lot of the times we don't quite understand um, why we use them. Uh, we find something, uh, maybe it's by random, maybe we're experimenting here, uh, and then uh, sometimes they work and we just go forth and don't really know it. So today, this is a simple thing. There are rough surfaces and there are smooth surfaces and here's what I use for them, things that I found to work the best for the projects I do. Again, very straightforward. You've probably used the similar things or come to the same conclusions I have. The only difference is I like to go a couple uh, steps further in there and actually figure out, well, why? Why does this work? So then when another problem comes up like this, you can apply that same knowledge. Number one, rough surfaces. Uh, typically, the, the products that I've landed on are Pretty Chinex Elite. These things, insanely good brushes. Um, tips here, Chinex bristles, uh, pre-flagged. So again, you get the, uh, let's see if we can get that in there. Uh, pre-flagged like that. They got a little bit of split ends on them, which actually holds more paint and uh, gets more into kind of the textury sort of things, uh, textured surfaces, and uh, marathons. Um, the biggest problem uh, with uh, painting rough surfaces, you know, let's say you have really rough uh, knockdown. Rough surfaces like this. This is a typical knockdown. This is a sample that my company did for a job like that. Uh, lots of brushes, lots of brushes, lots of rollers will work for that. But the typical problem that you run into uh, with roller covers, if you just pick a random one or a super cheap one, is on a rough surface, you have to apply more pressure and it gets really matted down and then you lose all the benefit of that. So typically, when we do rough surfaces, we are going to use a knit uh, roller cover. Now, there's two basic kinds of, uh, of kind of construction with roller covers and knit and woven. So with knit, let's see if I can get my... Knit, these are, these are how they're constructed. So typically you have a piece of fiber going like this, and another piece of fiber kind of going around there. Like that. That's the typical section of when you have uh, the roller covers coming out, the fiber sticking out like that. These uh, typical sort of nylon uh, construction, especially with like the marathon, will actually stay thicker uh, they won't mat down longer and uh, if you've ever used either cheap roller covers or, the, or one that's not tailor built for that You know that these things can turn into you know, they can mush down really fast This does not and the big benefit of that is going to be uh, There's going to be added production uh, You're going to be able to roll longer and you're going to be able to do more cover more of those little uh, bumps and grooves and stuff like that uh, Let's see here uh, less lint as well. So especially with the marathon uh, one of the downsides uh, with typical uh, nylon roller covers or even knit roller covers is that some, once in a while they leave a little lint behind. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, you're always going to leave something behind, uh, but these leave almost nothing. And uh, it's amazing uh, when you've done some textured surfaces with this uh, what, uh, what it'll do. So typically with the Chinex Elite like this too, super stiff bristles, um, extra stiff. They're pre-flagged and uh, the, the bristles are actually made to pick up more paint and to release more paint smoothly. So when you have a textured surface, if you've ever used uh, a brush that's not designed for rough surfaces like that, you know you brush over it like this, 
uh, stucco even on the outside of a house. And it'll hit the tops, but it, it usually won't get into the, the little bumps and the grooves and the little valleys and stuff. But when you have a uh, textured surface and a really stiff bristled brush, you have to apply more force, but the, the bristles aren't just gonna curve out of there and, uh, and deflect against there. They're actually gonna conform to all of the, all the little bumps and grooves. And if you've ever done uh, the, the farthest extent, the, the place where you're gonna notice the most is when I've done historic restorations with stucco, and super deep, sometimes they're a half inch thick deep there, you gotta cut a little bit around a window trim or something like that. And if you use a brush that's not specifically made for that, a very delicate, fine bristled brush made for enamel for that, you'll realize very quickly that you're gonna ruin that brush and you're not gonna produce much. When you get the right brush and the right roller on that stuff, it's amazing how much quicker you can go, 10 to 20 times faster uh, when we've done little time trials uh, with old stucco and, uh, and very, very rough wood and textures like that. But it seriously makes a difference. So again, it's simple. There's a lot of times where, you know, we're not typically gonna use an enamel brush on stucco on the outside of a house. We all sort of understand that, but why? Uh, the thinking is stiffer bristles will actually give you more production, better coverage on rough surfaces. Um, yeah, that's basically the idea behind uh, knit roller covers uh, and extra stiff bristle brushes. And there's lots of options for you guys out there from Purdy. These are the ones that I've sort of, uh, I've sort of uh, landed on over the years with, uh, with being super productive uh, and lasting a long time. So let's go to the next one here. Smooth stuff. So typically, let's see if we can get this. Do, 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 do. There we go. Oh, come on. All right, we'll go like this. Okay, sorry, trying to get the right camera angle. I'm in a mirror view here so that you guys can see all of this stuff. So, smooth surface. Typically, when you have you know, a piece of trim, smooth board, um, you know, paneling, things like that, uh, you're gonna be aided uh, and you're gonna get a finer finish with a softer bristle brush. So typically, um, honestly, uh, this has been a, uh, a staple of, of my fine finishing for years and years, the nylon. And uh, amazingly smooth bristles. It's, you don't want a floppy brush like this, but you want a delicate. It's a big difference between, what you'll notice with Nylox is insanely, insanely fine, fine bristles, lots of flagging on the ends, um, just enough stiffness where you can push some enamel around, but soft enough where when you drag it, the bristles aren't digging into the finish, and they're going to give you an ultra, ultra smooth finish. And uh, um, I've put people up to the test before because people love to uh, do cabinets and trim with mini rollers and things like that, and they're fine. They work well. Honestly, I can get one of the finest finishes uh, ever with one of these. If you've seen my uh, series of Purdy videos where I kind of point out my favorite kind of go-to brushes, I actually showed you I hand brush some trim in my own office with this. It's indistinguishable uh, from the spray trim that I did as well. So uh, insanely good brush. Um, extra smooth uh, and they're tipped and flagged specifically uh, to get that sort of uh, nice finish. Now, when we have a smooth surface, we all know that we want uh, a really smooth paint finish as well. This is where a woven cover comes in. Uh, white doves are, are my go-to here, typically about a half inch for when we do standard wall painting. You can certainly go a little bit less than that. Half inch for me seems to ride the line between, you could go a quarter inch, you could go three eighth inch, um, but you don't get a lot of uh, extra production. You know, it only holds so much paint. If you go any thicker, sometimes you put a little more um, uh, stipple into it, uh, give or take, depending on the paint. But half inch seems to be a good combination, riding right down the middle of, you know, small enough to give you a fine finish, but also you're gonna get a little production out of it too. So woven, this is how woven roller covers start. So think of, woven, think of weaves, think of interlocking sort of pieces like this. You're going to have pieces of uh, fiber and then you're going to have you're going to have the brush, uh, the, the fibers actually coming through and over so it holds on to them better. Uh, yeah. These do not put lint in your paint which is amazing. If you've ever used substandard roller stuff, I've seen homeowners do this before, where they use something uh, from, uh, you know, not a very good uh, manufacturer or a very, very inexpensive one, and there's lint all over the walls. 
these will not leave lint on your walls. Um, this is a, uh, with white doves, they're actually a, uh, a fabric or a uh, fiber called uh, Draylon, which is kind of a cool thing. Uh, and again, like I said, lint free. So I'm gonna go through some of the comments here, see what you guys have, and then uh, I'll kind of walk you through the uh, pretty backpack giveaway as well. So, all right. Jade Turner, thanks for watching. Oh man, lots of lots of my uh, lots of the friends here. Tiffany, thanks for watching from New Jersey. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Vanessa, how you doing? Uh, let's see here, Anthony. Oh, thank you so much. Oh yeah, like I said, um, Purdy is nice enough to give away. Uh, five of these backpacks here. Small ask everybody, please. Personal favor to Purdy, personal favor to me. Please, 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 if you own one of these, review it. I promise you it will only take a few minutes. Link uh, in the notes to the show here. Let's see if anybody's got any question, uh, and then we'll kind of get going here. Da, 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 da. Oh, Jim Jatko, he mentioned the power lock extension poles too. Absolutely, uh, I got uh, two of them in my personal kit, uh, kind of the, you know, just standard sizes here. Normally they're in here, but uh, they're actually in my van because we were prepping another job site there, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Cindy Howard, love all the compartments, absolutely. Uh, these are specially made. This is the, with Purdy backpack, sorry, the mirror image here. Uh, this is the first painter's backpack ever. Uh, Purdy's been messing around for 95 years now. They know what they're doing. And this is the first one uh, by pros for pros. So uh, anybody who's used one, this is a substantial thing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's see what else we got. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, Jennifer. Thank you so much, Jennifer Bauer. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Oh, nice. Tommy Welch. All of the above items requested complete. Awesome, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is super helpful. We want to get the word out about good people making good products, and, uh, and this is definitely it. So, uh, do, 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 do. all right. Ah, Wellington, how are you? Bum dia. Let's see if we got any questions. Otherwise, I'll kind of recap the show. And, uh, oops. Stevie Jones, how's it going, man? <laughs> oh, we got uh, Renee from San Diego. Thanks for watching. Okay, everybody. Um, so, again, to recap the show, if you guys have any questions about rough or smooth surfaces, I've kind of laid out, this is what we use. You probably use something similar, but here's why it works. Uh, very good tools. Also, um, again, personal ask from Purdy, personal favor to me. If you have one of these things, please review it. Link in there, couple minutes, I promise. Um, to, in order to get one of these Purdy backpacks, in order to be in the running for one of these Purdy backpacks, these beauties, I am gonna make, oops, let's, let's rotate that around here. We're gonna make a small couple of asks. So number one, you have to share the show. That's number one. If, uh, if you do not share the show, I'm not gonna consider you for one of these backpacks. Share the show, it's easy, it's one button. Uh, number two, like Purdy on Facebook, link in there. Like Purdy on Instagram, link's also there. And then also comment below how this thing would help you. So again, folks, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be monitoring this uh, over the weekend. On Monday, three days from now, we are going to pick uh, five winners at random. So although this show is live now, anytime you're watching this, uh, over the next uh, three days, give or take, you can still do this. Share the show, like Purdy on Facebook, like Purdy on Instagram, uh, and then comment below how this would help you. And five winners will be chosen and we're gonna send you out a Purdy backpack. One of you special people will get that prep pouch, my official Nick Slavic painting and restoration prep pouch that all of my craftspeople and apprentices use. So um, everybody, Thank you so much. It's been a really fun week of deer hunting here in Minnesota. We have fun things happening in the shop. Look at that bad boy. For those of you who know, that is the beginnings of a, uh, of a little spray booth. Uh, and uh, I'm about to punch out on some uh, family time because we work so long hours here. So everybody, uh, from me and from Purdy, thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you on behalf of the PCA again. If you are a uh, interested contractor, interested in uh, mastering the craft, interested in growing your business, the PCA is the place for you. You will not be disappointed by the people that you meet there. Uh, and there's a free group to get to know 
uh, and get your questions answered on Facebook called the Paint Ed Group that I would urge you uh, to at least look into. Again, all free. Thank you to Purdy. Thank you, everybody. And I'll be really looking forward to seeing all the comments, all the shares, and all the likes for Purdy because we are going to give five of these bad boys away. So have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you later.